Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture uh, 47. So, today we are uh, starting with the general perturbation theory. So, uh, first we look into uh, the basic uh, equation from where the perturbation is arising. So, as we have done the three body problem already. So, from there we are aware of the equation of motion for the three body system or many body system. So, the same thing first I will uh, recall and thereafter I will start with uh, uh, further processing. So, uh, first we write the equation of motion, so, equation of motion of particle 1 in or simply we write as m 1 of particle m 1 in the inertial frame R 1 double dot. So, all the forces acting on this particle. So, this we can write as m 1 times m j multiplied by g r 1 j whole cube r 1 j and j spans from except 1 this is from 2 to n. So, i is included here okay. i included here and this we name as equation 1. Okay. Similarly, a particle M i in the inertial frame R i double dot this will be given by j equal to 1 to n g times m j divided by r i j whole cube r i j ok, but the particle i cannot apply force on itself. So, we have to negate this in this place particle 1 cannot apply force on itself. So, already 1 is not there we have started from j equal to 2. Now, subtracting equation 1 from equation 2. double dot minus r 1 double dot. So, this vector becomes r 1 i double dot. So, this equal to j equal to 1 to n g times
therefore we can rewrite this equation g we can take it outside okay and rewriting it this will break into two parts we will write it like this putting j equal to 1 so th this is g already we have taken outside so we remove that the first part is putting j equal to 1 so this is m1 times r i1 divided by r i1 q okay. this is the first part and the other part remains as j equal to 2 to n remember this is the for the ith particle okay so here j not equal to i this will stand mj times rij divided by rij whole cube so these are the two parts we have divided it and similarly we will divide this into two parts so this is coming because of the force on the first particle due to other ones so force on the first particle due to the ith particle here see if we have not written j not equal to i okay. that means i is included here the first particle is getting affected by the ith particle so first of all we will break that and g already we are taking outside common so that goes and we get here so j first we replace by i so this becomes m i and r 1 i j we are replacing by i and then r 1 i q and plus the other terms so j equal to 2 to n m j r uh, 1 j divided by r 1 j whole q and here we need to write j not equal to i because the i part we have already taken outside in this place and then we close the bracket here rearranging the terms noting that r i 1 this equal to minus r 1 i so i r i 1 we are going to replace by r 1 i because here the r 1 i is available so the, then the above equation gets reduced to m1 minus r1i and this is magnitude and therefore also this we can replace as r1i whole cube and from here th we pick up this term and put here in this place so this is mi r1i divided by r 1 i whole cube okay. and the other terms are combined together whole cube see in both the places we have the same indexes over j so we do not have any problem in discussing this part so mj r1j divided by r1j whole cube j equal to 2 to 
n and j not equal to i. Now, one more step and we can write it more in a concise way minus m 1 plus m i times r 1 i divided by r 1 i q. So, this is the term this one we are reducing here in this place. Thereafter we pick up this term and write here in this place So, this term we will be using and this term we will be using combining them together ok and here we should have a minus sign because once we have we have taken this term in this place and this term we are bringing here in this place. So, this term comes with this minus sign. So, we should place a minus sign here. j equal to 2 to n and j not equal to i j equal to 2 j not equal to i m j we can take it outside and we can write it as r i j this this is cube r i j cube r 1 j divided by r 1 j cube. Okay, so, we can recognize if we reorganize it So, we have r 1 i double dot equal to minus g times m 1 plus m i divided by r 1 i this for the first term we have taken and thereafter the second term plus g times m j plus g times summation j equal to 2 to n j not equal to i m j okay. and rest of the terms we have to copy from here. R i j and then uh, we have written twice R i j. So, it is uh, only once it will appear here R i j divided by R i j whole cube minus 
माइनस आर वन जे डिवाइडेड बाई आर वन जे होल क्यूब so now we can recognize that r1 i double dot equal to minus if we have suppose the jts particles are not present let us write here that jts particles if jts particles are not present then we get here the equation in the form m1 plus mi divided by r1 i whole cube and this is your two body problem and this is written the motion of the its particle about the one okay. this is particle number one and this is the its particle so you are trying to describe the motion of the its particle how it will appear about the particle one so th this term this is the extra term which is appearing as a perturbation term so over the two particle system this term is trying to disturb the motion of this two particle system okay and therefore treating this problem in a general manner okay it's a call the general perturbation theory because of this perturbing term this is the perturbing term perturbing so let us write this perturbing term as uh, for the time being as ap because it's a vector so we write this as ap equal to g times summation to when r 1 j whole cube now we need to recognize what this perturbation term is perturbation acceleration the first term and the second term these are the two terms even in this particular one so this we are writing as ap this whole thing so perturbation due to some other planet just consider this this is the ap for convenience we have written it now what this term is and what this term is so to understand this i take one problem and then discuss this in the context of the sun earth and moon so let us consider that the sun is here and earth is i will show it by green so this is earth okay and moon is going around this so moon i will show it by green color or uh, by pink color okay so moon is somewhere here in this place so it's uh, going around in the orbit around the earth and simultaneously earth is 
going around in the orbit around the sun. If we try to describe the motion in this way. So, if you look for the force of, of the earth on the moon. So, force of the earth on the moon this will be given by say m moon is the mass of the moon. So, uh, let us write just acceleration the acceleration or we go on the next page. acceleration of the moon towards the earth. Okay. So, how much this will be magnitude wise if you look this will be given by m earth times g divided by r earth to moon the mass of the moon is small as compared to the earth so we can neglect it okay for simplicity okay otherwise if you want to include it so you have to write it the m moon times same earth plus m earth times g divided by r e m square where e m r e m is the earth moon distance. And this is your acceleration magnitude wise. r moon about the earth. And what about the acceleration of the moon about the sun? So, if we write that and suppose we write it in this way m sun moon to sun distance ok. So, what I am trying to show here that here your is sun is located the earth is located here in this place and around this the moon is going in the orbit. So, what is the force on the moon and what is the uh, force on the moon due to the sun and uh, force due to on the moon due to the sun and force on the moon which is acting here force on the moon due to the earth what these quantities are. So, if suppose we neglect this here in this equation this m part the moon part because it is a small value and simply we write for convenience m earth times g. So, th this is the acceleration and multiplied by mass. So, you will get the corresponding force. So, which force is greater? This is the question here. So, to look into the corresponding uh, this uh, magnitude of the acceleration we can compare it by r m this is very important to understand r m is double dot this magnitude and uh, if we divide it. So, this becomes m e by m sun g g cancels out r m sun is square divided by r 
moon to earth distance or earth to moon distance this square. So, what is the value here that we have to look into what this ratio is and what this ratio is. So, this uh, value we can uh, look into ok. So, uh, we can write here that m sun this is nearly 3 3 0 0 0 0 times the mass of the moon and plus earth. While r moon to sun uh, moon to sun distance this is will be nearly the same as earth to sun earth to sun distance ok because it is a nearby only on that scale it is not much different and this quantity is around 15 crore kilometers. So, 15 into 10 to the power 7 kilometers and what is the value of the uh, what is the distance between the earth and the moon. So, it is around 3 lakh 84 thousand kilometers. So, 3 lakhs 84 thousand kilometers. Now, calculate these ratios. So, 3 we put this value m earth. So, here moon is small. So, m earth by m sun we can write here which will be 1 by 3 3 0 0 0 and this quantity here will be if you look into this distance. So, moon to sun distance and uh, moon to earth distance. So, moon to sun distance this is nearly equal to r earth to sun distance. So, we can write as r earth to sun square. So, this part r m s we pick up from here r m s this part 15 into 10 to the power 7 and divided by 384 0 0 0. So, this turns out to be around uh, 15 into 10 to the power 4 and divided by 3 8 4. and then we need to square this also. So, first we get this ratio and thereafter we will square it. So, this distance is uh, if we reduce it. So, this is 2 and then shape uh, around uh, we approximately write 25. So, if we do this, so we will be doing little higher estimate of that. So, this will make it easy. So, that way this becomes 10,000 divided by 25. So, this is around 400. So, this is on higher side. Okay. So, here this becomes 400 square and divided by this quantity. So, 400 into 400 divided by 330000 so 16 by 
So, this way what we see that the acceleration due to on the moon due to the earth this turns out to be around 16 by this ratio 33 means this is the upper one is less than the lower one. So, attraction on the moon due to the sun is larger, okay. but still it is going around the moon. So, from where this paradox is appearing? So, this answer is hidden in the equation that we have arrived at here in this place, this equation. So, uh, if we look from the earth and moon point of view, so this is your main equation, earth and moon equation. So, we can consider that one is earth, m 1 is earth and uh, m i is moon. So, this gives you the two body problem on that here if you look into these two terms present inside the bracket. So, it is uh, getting subtracted the first term is the first term which I am showing here by this red color. This is the perturbation on the ITS particle here in this case this is the moon due to the JTS particle which is the sun okay. and from there then you are subtracting acceleration of the first particle which is here in this case the earth due to the sun. Okay, so, once you subtract it, so then what happens? Then that quantity becomes quite a small. So, this quantity therefore, because of this subtraction, this quantity becomes small. So, what it means? What does it mean that though the force acting on the moon is a small as compared to the sun, but simultaneously the earth is also accelerating toward the sun. Okay. So, earth is in free fall motion toward the sun and because of that reason even though the force on the moon due to the sun is a small, okay, but it does not moon does not get out of the earth and go toward the sun. Other way you can understand that both of them are falling toward the sun. Okay, going in the orbit we call this the free fall motion and the, there is a reason for calling this as the free fall motion. So, if we take the case of the earth and some particle if you throw with velocity v okay, and we call this as the free fall while this is going in the orbit it is going here in the orbit and say this velocity is v 0 here. So, as the particle starts moving from this place it is a freely moving under the gravitational acceleration. So, it starts falling down. So, as a result it is a falling downwards and simultaneously this v is present. So, because of v this is moving here on this side. So, the net result is that it comes to this place it comes to this place while it comes to this place this v 0 vanishes and the motion because of this vertical pull only is present here in this point. So, your this is a falling trajectory the particle is or the satellite is falling here satellite is falling like this. Okay. So, and gravitational attraction is acting all the way in this direction again it starts falling from this place 
So, this motion while it comes to this place, this vertical motion will get removed because of the gravitational attraction and only you get the motion here in this place and because of this we call this as the free fall. So, here both are in the free fall motion, the earth also and the moon also. So, moon actual trajectory around the sun it appears like this. So, the main term the conclusion is that this is our main term of the which is representing the motion i in this case the ITS particle is the moon. So, motion of the moon around the earth so, this is the main term which is written here and this is the perturbation term. So, perturbation term is subtraction of two terms the first term is directly perturbing the moon and obviously, this quantity is large. Okay. So, this term uh, I will use another color to indicate this. This term along with g, this term, this term is much larger than this term. Okay, but from this term, then you are subtracting this term, this particular one, and because of that this part the whole term the perturbation term it becomes quite small and that is the reason that moon does not get off from the orbit of the earth and goes toward the sun. It does rather sun acts just as a perturbative force on the moon's motion. So, both of them so and this is what is called this is the first is the direct acceleration of the moon toward the sun and this is this part adds to indirect acceleration of the moon toward the sun because this appears this term acts this particular term it is acting on the earth and in turn through the earth the moon is getting affected it is not a direct. So, this is an indirect term and this term is the direct term. So, we uh, wind up here uh, this particular um, lecture and move to the next lecture thank you very much.